working here on the first of the Corvettes to be sunk as part of Project Revival here in the uh, Portimo area of the Algarve. Uh, this is a very important project for the whole concepts of artificial reefs in Europe. It is the uh, pioneer effort to clean a ship, demonstrate its environmental viability, and deploy it safely in an environmentally responsible manner and in a diver-friendly manner. One of the interesting things about uh, wreck diving is it's very similar to mountaineering in, in uh, many ways. And I, I've been involved in everything from uh, climbing in the Rockies and the Andes uh, and the Alps to uh, Himalayan climbing. Uh, what you find is that you can anticipate certain risks and there is always that 20% of what is going to happen out there that you can't anticipate you cannot make this sport absolutely risk-free. All you can do is mitigate the risks, anticipate things that are reasonably foreseeable, and hope that you're gonna have divers properly following proper wreck penetration techniques. Nice thing about these ships is they provide ideal classrooms, ideal situations for people to properly learn how to penetrate a wreck uh, using proper techniques, using their equipment, so hopefully they'll have a fun, safe time when they're on this ship, and they'll take that experience and go to places like Truck Lagoon and other wrecks around the world, and there'll be better divers for the time they've spent on these artificial reefs. We've worked with dive masters and dive instructors and very experienced uh, uh, wreck divers to come up with a protocol for the industry which we call the rule of three. Particularly high up in the ship where 85% of your divers are going to be active, uh, the rule is, is that by the time you go into the third compartment that from where you enter the, the ship, you will be seeing a natural light exit to the ship. And it's a good example of it right here. Here we are, the third uh, cabinet along this corridor. There is a natural light exit out to the side. There's also an exit down below, down into the uh, engine room. That is followed immediately by another vertical light exit out of the engine room. So what you basically do is we call it Swiss cheesing the ship. Uh, it provides a way for marine life and water to get in, uh, which helps the visibility in the ship, but in most importantly, it provides a way for divers to get out. One of the interesting things about virtually designing the, uh, the risk situation in a ship, it's very much like a, a ski area that has everything from beginner runs to the double black diamond expert runs. Well, on this particular ship, the double black diamond expert run is going to be literally coming down the smokestack and penetrating down into the engine room of the ship, which puts you into a, uh, an area where you're going to have maximum pressure on the divers and thus reduced air uh, uh, time uh, during the dive. But we're also going to provide ways for them to have ways to go forward in the ship and again see as many areas where they're going to see light to the sides of the ship or lights above them so they can safely exit the ship at appropriate locations. They can come in and if they want to go right to the bottom of the ship they can also go back into the engine room from here, but more importantly, we're going to rig up a system using diver safety lines so they can go forward into the interior of the ship uh, towards the bow. But again, we'll I'll take you through and show you how the, it is done in such a way that the risk that they're taking is actually minimized under the circumstances. Now this is a wide open uh, area in the forward part of the hull. Uh, we just come forward from the auxiliary machine space. You can see again we're providing an extra uh, diver access hole over on the side here. There will be another one over on the uh, starboard side. Right in front of us we have the uh, one of the central corridors where we've cut away the hatches. The ladders will be taken away so divers will have a, a, a vertical access to this particular part of the ship. Uh, we find that 85% of the divers actually don't go below the main deck of the ship. 
Uh, then another 10% of the divers will go below the main deck of the ship and only about 5%, the really advanced uh, technical divers will come down into this, these parts of the ship. Um, we find that they're very well equipped, they know what they're doing and uh, we, we've had very few uh, incidents involving a, any kind of a technical diver. Uh, but that, just to illustrate what we're doing here, just above me is the old uh, gun turret on this ship. Uh, it's been removed, we've cut a, a nice square hatch above it so a diver can plan to come down here, attach their line here and then work back towards the auxiliary machine space and engine room uh, at this level of the ship. Now we're just underneath the bridge of the ship here and we have got a good illustration as to how this works. You have hatches cut away on each side of the ship so divers can come straight across the ship. In this instance we've got a forward area that has been cut open to provide an even easier access to the outside of the ship and Behind you, you have a number of other areas that we've cut extra holes in bulkheads. We're cutting extra hatches off. There will not be a single door or hatch on this ship that is still operable. And they'll all either be completely cut off or they'll be uh, sealed in the open position. That way, nothing can, can uh, happen to actually close the door behind a diver and trapping a diver at this level.